So we're going to do a tutorial on cutting boards, spread boards today and uh, there are so many variations and so many things that can go wrong and uh, so many different styles that it's going to be impossible to cover everything. So I'm just going to give you as brief an overview as I can and then we'll get into making a fairly standard one. Uh, cutting boards, you can have a lot of creativity with them. Um, a lot of times if you have a blemish in a board, uh, you can, instead of just cutting it off at the blemish, you can cut around the blemish and make a certain style. Uh, it doesn't have to be rectangular or square. Um, a lot of times we'll put holes in them to hang it by. Uh, a lot of variation. The color is one of the biggest things. You can make a standard cutting board, which is just dark and white, dark and white, and so on. Um, but there's not a lot of uh, uh, attraction to it. Um, depending on the grain of the wood, it may disappear or it may stand out. So a lot of times you want to vary not only the color, but also the widths of the board. Another thing you can vary uh, is the grain. So I'm not sure you can see it from there, but this is an end grain. This is a sideways grain. Somebody cut it going, if the board was going this way, they cut it. And then we have a straight grain. And the problem with this is when you glue it together, all this wood will expand and contract differently because the grains are different uh, directions. And so uh, odds are this joint is going to split. Um, and this joint is going to split because the grain pattern is so different. So you usually want your grain pattern to all go the same direction, whether horizontal or vertical. Uh, different types of wood sometimes change things. If we have a wood like this that has a real high oil content, um, odds are its bond is going to be tougher to uh, it's going to be tougher to bond it because the oil is going to resist some of that glue. So sometimes if it's a real high-end dense wood with a lot of oil, you have to do a biscuit joint to get those to glue together correctly. Um, <clears throat> sometimes uh, you can leave the live edge on some of the wood to give it a sense of originality. Um, <clears throat> Uh, another thing that's an issue is the size of the cutting board. It looks kind of cute, but what would you use this for? You can use it for tomatoes or uh, cucumbers or something smaller, but that's it. It really limits your range. Whereas if you have a cutting board that is um, at least 12 inches wide, at least 16 inches long, you can pretty much use it for anything, but then it takes up more space in your kitchen. So depending on what you're using it for. I've also seen the cutting boards that have the blood let ends for like if you're cutting fish or something. Uh, they've got a little divot that catches the fluids and stuff. I would really recommend against that. It's just creating a cavity that will uh, collect oils and different types of uh, cutoff from whatever. If you're using meat, the blood's going to get in that line and uh, it's going to saturate that pretty soon it's going to rot. Um, so it's usually best to not put any indentations in your cutting board, not have any holes in it, uh, not have any knots where uh, material can get left. Another style is uh, using just a bandsaw to cut out a shape and then putting in a real thin veneer and uh, then re-laminating it and <clears throat> It's a good design, uh, just remember whenever you do something like that, whatever size you cut out, like if I cut out a sixteenth, I need to laminate back in a sixteenth. But if I do a curve and I only cut out a sixteenth and I try and put a quarter inch board back in there, the uh, curves are not going to match anymore, it's not going to work. So if I cut out a three eighths swath, I need to make sure I put three eighths material back in. Um, this is one of my biggest issues with cutting boards. It's one of my biggest pet peeves. Students will uh, want to just get the project done. And when you just want to get the project done, you tend to not think through what the issues are. And uh, I'm not interested in a project. Your instructor is probably not interested in a project. You're the only one interested in the project. The instructors are interested in your skill set. And if you're not learning the skills, they really don't want to give you wood 
or money or let you waste uh, your time. So the issue with this is we have softwood, we have vertical grain, we have horizontal grain, we have uh, boards that have been squished out of place so it's not flat across the bottom. Um, and it's got a curve on it. They didn't spend the time. There's really thin boards and there's really thick boards. All of these are basically a waste of material because the softwood you can't cut on, so it means it's no longer a cutting board. Uh, even if you have a soft piece right in the middle, uh, you've got a piece of dug fur, the smallest piece right in the middle. So that means everything has to be planed down to the smallest board to make sure it's flat. That means if I plane all the way down to this board and I plane all the way up to the shortest one here, I'm going to have about a half inch material left. So this huge board and it's only going to be a half inch thick. Well the problem with half inch thick is it's going to get a lot of deflection and it's going to move on you and it's not going to be a good cutting board um, and soft grain will always warp on you. So cutting board is specifically uh, in most schools anyway, the cutting board is so that you learn to use the table saw accurately and well. It doesn't have anything to do with the project. It has to do with your skill sets. So trying to hide your wood from an instructor and glue something up when they're not looking just causes them even uh, more strife, especially in your relationship. So it's always best, always best to check off your material with your instructor before you start cutting anything. Um, another issue I've had is students that get all their material ready and then they decide, oh, I want a 16-inch board. And so they have all their boards lined up and they take them over to the chop saw and cut them all at 16. Never do that. Problem is once you glue it up, all your boards are going to squeeze and move. <clears throat> and then uh, once you turn it to cut it flush on both sides, you'll no longer have a 16-inch board. They're all going to be about 15 and a half or less. <clears throat> so you always want to only cut the table saw direction and glue everything up and then afterwards cut it to your 16 inch length. Another thing I forgot to mention is uh, material that goes the opposite direction. If you have a board like this, um, you better check off your design with your instructor ahead of time because this wood is not going to retract very much when it shrinks but the wood in here will so when this shrinks this is going to be left holding this board out and odds are unless it's really dried uh, you're going to get a crack right along here and here unless you do the correct joinery with like a biscuit joint or something so again a good idea is check with your instructor if you're going to do any different design also on this one uh, another thing to note if you cut this shape to the right width and you've cut this to the right width and you glue those together this is not going to be perfect joint and this is not going to be a perfect joint so you're going to end up having to cut those again on both sides to make sure it's completely true before you glue it to a completely flat piece and again students don't think about that ahead of time and it's an easy way to get the measurements off on your project so check with your instructor can't stress that enough making sure your material is correct before you start your project. So I can't stress this enough. Check off your material depending on what, unless the shop teacher gives you your material, check it off with him ahead of time or her ahead of time before you start this project. There's so many things that can go wrong that you don't even understand yet. Uh, it's best to always dry fit something too and check that at off at that point too. Uh, <clears throat> I know that was a lot of information, hopefully some of it stuck with you. Uh, we're going to start with a simple board um, with a little bit of design and uh, hopefully uh, you'll have material to follow along in your shop. Let's get started. So the first thing that I make my students do is come up with a drawing that is going to adequately reflect what their cutting board is going to look like afterwards. And this is kind of critical because otherwise students will just grab boards, laminate together, and it looks really ugly, or sometimes it looks really good, depending on how good of an eye they have. So this way, uh, by making a drawing first, they can verify with me what it's going to look like. 
So I always use half scale and that usually gets it on one sheet. So uh, this board says it's two inches wide and it actually is one inch wide uh, on the ruler. So this means uh, this is eight inches long. That means my cutting board is gonna be 16, approximately 16 inches long when I get done. And this way I can tell about how wide it's gonna come out too. So this comes out to about uh, six inches wide, which is gonna be about 12 inches wide when it gets done. So I know approximately how much <clears throat> material I'm gonna use and how big it's gonna be. Um, I also went around and picked up some material that I found. Uh, in my shop, I don't want the students cutting up really nice boards down into thin strips uh, because um, the big boards are a lot more expensive. So I tend to make them find boards that are less than six inches wide uh, that they can use to cut down for whatever they want to. So um, I found some material outside. It's got some twist and some cup in it, so I'm going to have to fix that. But uh, it's a smaller cutting board, should be all right. I also found some colors that contrast. So I found some uh, slightly red ones, some slightly white ones, and tan and brown that I'm gonna try and use in a pattern to try and make them jump out. So I always try and get the high contrasting wood next to, the, uh, uh, next to each other so that it really draws your attention to it. Uh, the grain sometimes will fight against your contrast. So if I have a really heavy grain in a board, like this board here, you can see the grain in it. And if I have that right next to a high contrast board, um, sometimes it takes away from each other because people are not sure whether they should look at your grain or they should look at the contrast. So it's kind of interesting how these things will play against each other when you make your cutting board. Sometimes you won't know until you're done with the project how it's gonna pop or not. So I decided to go with a, a similar pattern on both sides. So I have a two, a quarter, inch and a half, half, and one of them's getting bigger and one's getting smaller as it goes across. And then I have a high contrast uh, red on white right in the middle. And I use designations on mine. This is a walnut, maple, oak. And then because I don't know what kind of wood this is, I can make a guess, but because I don't know, I'm just writing an R for red. Um, and you can designate yours by color. You can number them. So <clears throat> I've got a design and I'm gonna get that verified with my instructor. Oh, I did it. And then I'm gonna move on to uh, cutting my boards down. Now. <clears throat> when you get done with your cutting board, you always want it as thick as possible. A lot of students will try and um, keep it uh, around three-fourths, but uh, the bigger it is, if you have thicker material, you might as well make it as thick as your material is. There's no sense planing down past what you need to. This material right here is really wide, but it's really thin, so if I was to cut it, it would only be a half inch thick. It wouldn't work for my cutting board. But when I tip it upright, now it's a half inch thick and it's as tall as I want it to be. So I can cut this into one inch strips. I can cut a whole bunch of one inch strips out of here, tilt them upright, and now I have half inch wide strips at uh, one inch tall. I always want to start with material that's about one inch tall. If you find something, <clears throat> like if I was to lay this red one over, now it's only three fourths inch tall. There's no way to glue my cutting board together and have it end up more than three fourths when I get done. So this one's half gonna have to be on end as well. Uh, never start with a board that's less than um, seven eighths thick. So if I'm going around, this one's less than seven eighths, but I'm gonna turn it upright. So whenever you're gonna glue a board together, make sure there's no uh, boards that are less than um, seven eighths. I try to aim for one inch. All your boards should be one inch before you start and that way you'll keep the final product will be above three-fourths of an inch. Um, so I have my material and I think I have enough of everything here. Always remember check with your instructor first after you get your material figured out. Um, I've had students come to me with $80 boards and thankfully they checked with me and I've had other students come to me with $80 boards and didn't check and they end up throwing away a lot of money. So uh, depending on if your instructor gives you the material or not, you need to check it off with them. So once they come with their drawing, 
um, I'm going to sign it, or they're gonna uh, they're gonna show it to me. I'm, if it's good, I'm gonna sign off on their project, and then they're gonna come find their material. Once they find their material, I'm also gonna sign off on that. So now I know that both are verified. They're ready to start on their project. So. <clears throat> I know that the first piece I need is a walnut and I need a two inch piece out of that and then I have another two inch piece. So all I need in walnut are two two inch pieces and my cutting board is supposed to be 16 inches long. However, as I referred to before, if I cut a piece 16 inches long, once I glue it together there's no way after I glue all my boards together that um, when I trim it down, it's going to be 16 inches long anymore. So I always want an inch longer than what I'm actually doing. Um, so my board says I want the final product 16 inches, so I'm going to aim for 17. So I need all my boards to be 17 inches long. I can either cut that or I can just leave them long and uh, cut it afterwards. Um, if it's around 18 to 20 inches, I'm not even going to bother it. I'm just going to glue it together and cut it afterwards. But some of these, like this is a six foot or an eight foot long board, this one's four foot long, there's no point in me gluing on and then trying to cut it later. So I'll cut to my 17 or 18 inch length and then uh, work from it from there and I can put my other material back for somebody else to use. This one um, <clears throat> is going to be, this one's about uh, 22 inches long or so and I only need 17 inches but if I cut off where it's 17 inches long nobody can use that last little piece so there's no point in me cutting it off now I might be able to uh, incorporate it in my design later if it's longer I may be able to make some profile shape so I'm gonna leave if it's close if it's within three four inches I'm gonna leave it that length and I'm just gonna use it as a glue last thing <clears throat> And students uh, will get messed up on this quite a bit. This project is specifically for learning to use the table saw. I don't really care about your project. Your instructor probably doesn't care about your project. What we care about is you learning the skills on the table saw. So if you find a whole bunch of thin boards and you just glue them up together, you do have a cutting board, it doesn't follow any design, but it doesn't do you any good and it doesn't do me any good. It steals my material and you didn't learn anything other than using some of my glue. So the whole point is to make as many cuts as you can. If you have wide pieces, anything wider than two inches, your board's going to slightly deform once it gets some oil on it. The point of a cutting board is the lamination process um, makes it a lot stronger so you don't want really wide pieces if I was to glue this to another board and have a really wide piece the oil on here in itself is going to cause it to deflect afterwards and I'm going to it's not going to sit flat on the table so the whole point of a cutting board is to learn the skill set and lamination so it's stronger than when it was uh, originally so we want it as cut as and narrow as pieces as possible and the point is not to just grab boards and glue them together. It doesn't help anybody. So I know what pieces I have. I'm going to take them over to the chop saw um, for some of these that are too long. And I'm going to cut them down to my 17 inches that I need. And uh, then we'll use the table saw after that to start cutting.